My wife and I started this movie a few years ago. I didn't get to finish, but she did. And she told me about it, in graphic detail. But I felt bad that she had to see it without me, and I've been curious to finish it. But not that curious. Cut to a few years later, maybe I'm a little older, a little more jaded, a little harder to shock. This is Antichrist. From director Lars von Trier, director of Nymphomaniac Volume 1 and 2 and Melancholia, oh dear god. Willem Dafoe and Charlotte Gainsbourg are he and she. They don't have names. Check the credits. Wow, artsy. Showers are more erotic in slow motion than baths. The bedroom window is left open and unattended while they screw in the shower. Don't let the music fool you. I can't even show this to you pixelated. I usually get weirded out when I see a celebrity's genitals, but I found out this was a body double, so I can watch Spider-Man without blushing. While all this is going on, the couple have a toddler named Nick. Like me at that age, he's good at crib escaping. He's loose, open window, inattentive parents. Unfortunately, you can see where this is headed. They draw the scene out a lot. You really keep hoping for a last minute rescue, but it doesn't come. This is brutal. We also switch to color. He and she are devastated, of course. She blames herself and is taking full responsibility. He happens to also be a doctor, and he's skeptical of the therapy she is getting, so he decides to treat her himself. This place leads nowhere. Are you sure he's just not trying to save a few bucks? No therapist can know as much about you as I do. No, you don't have to flush these. These are legal. Let's make a list of things you're afraid of. The woods. What scares you about the woods? Everything. Understandable, bears are terrifying. So, he takes she to their cabin in the woods, a place they call Eden. Already that sounds like a bad idea. Has anything good ever happened in a cabin in the woods? Out in the woods, they take a short breather after Mikey throws their map into the stream. While she naps, he takes a look around. Aw, hi Bambi. See, nature is beautiful. Oh dear! I take it back, nature is horrifying. We finally get to the cabin. Yep, they're doomed. Did she photobomb her own kid? Open window plus hand plus ticks equals a rude awakening and probably Lyme disease. Ew, don't put your tick hand on me. But it's nature. More therapy. And she's making some progress, I suppose. But hey, baby steps. I walk ten feet. Can we go home now? I think I'm realizing nature is wonderful. Oh my god, oh my god, oh my god, oh my god, oh my god. Nature can go fuck itself. Maybe next time you can get over her fear of loud noises by making her deflect bullets. Okay, maybe it's not nature she's afraid of. Maybe it's, I don't know, Satan? How did I do that? He comes across a fox that appears to be mutilating itself. At least he looks freaked out, right? What does the fox say? Chaos reigns. Here's chaos reigning all over Willem. He goes over some of his wife's old thesis, which is about witch hunts, and he starts to see how she was kind of losing it back then. Either her mind was going, or her hand was just getting really tired. She came to believe that all females are inherently evil, which is crazy, right? And therefore, she must be as well. They have sex outside under a big tree where, I'm not even going to try to explain this, getting ticks all over their no-no places. Oh, I know. They're having a treesome. <laughs> she discovers he had an autopsy report on Nick. What did they find? They were able to determine that he's no longer alive. In a bizarre twist, she'd been putting their kid's shoes on backwards. There's a superstition that doing this will lead to an accident, but it's a little late for foreshadowing. Oh, ah. You're leaving me! Ah. Oh yeah, that'll make him stay and they start having angry, angry sex. 
And how would you like your nuts crushed? <laughs> Boom! Headshot! Whew. Let's take a moment to mourn his crushed nuts. After these messages, uh, we'll be right back. He's out cold, but Little Goblin is still waiting for Spider-Man. She proceeds to pleasure him, unconscious, until this happens. What? Oh god. She has a plan to make him stay. She drills into his leg and bolts a grindstone to him. Silly woman, that goes on his nose. He wakes up and can't get free. See what happens when you don't put daddy's tools back after you use them? While she's gone, he makes a very painful getaway. I suddenly want to see him roll away on that like a scary Willem Dafoe shaped unicycle. He's actually getting pretty far, all things considered. Where are you? Still think she's not evil? Come back! I still have to attach a bench grinder to your taint! Meanwhile, he tries to find his roots. Hmm, I'm related to Andrew Jackson. And now you see it too. You said you wanted to help me! You're sending mixed messages, honey. Come out to the coast, we'll get together, have a few laughs. What an odd place to find a crow. And for a second, I thought he had an ally. But no, the little bastard sells him out. Why won't you die? That sounds like someone beating a crow to death. Come Honey, listen very carefully. Go get help. For yourself, you crazy bitch. Remorseful, she digs him out. Sorry about the exploded nutsack. I forgive you. A flashback reveals she actually saw Nick climbing to, then fall out of the window. But she didn't seem to care because she's evil, I guess. She could also just be blaming herself in an extreme way, and this part is all in her head. Either way, in an apparent effort to punish herself and spite her genitals, she... cuts herself down there. Nothing. She performs a clitorectomy on herself. No, I can't show it. It is way too graphic. I don't think I can even censor it enough. It's not like I can say, roll that horrifying bean footage. So to represent the act, here's Anakin Skywalker. Do it. Oh, man in the boat overboard. I, I don't have one and I still felt it. But don't worry, she only really set the clitoris free, so she can give advice to Stan Marsh. He finds a wrench and undoes his guilt metaphor while fending off her attacks. Ah! Now I'm leaving you, bitch! Did you like my little joke? Hehe, <laughs> honey? Symbolic of the end of their marriage, he strangles her to death. Rather brutally. It was a crime of passion. She'd been torturing you, I'm sure the police will understand. Unless you do something crazy like burn the bo- Well, see you in prison, Doc. He's got a long walk home on one leg through a Hieronymus Bosch painting. Epilogue, and we're back to black and white. Yes, eat the berries. He must be starving. All he's had to eat all day was that weird-looking raisin he found on the floor back there. These guys show up one more time. And I can't wait for the extended edition where they cut in Hayden Christensen. And suddenly there are hundreds of blurry-faced women coming right at him. Yeah, I wouldn't want to be recognized either. I like to imagine this movie ending with Willem Dafoe being skeletonized by these women like Piranha. But no, it just ends there. That was Antichrist. To be honest, I'm not the most insightful when it comes to heavy metaphors. I'll tell you what I got out of it. I could be right, I could be wrong. I think it's one of these movies that could mean a few different things to different people. So this is what I got out of it. 
The entire movie is a descent into depression and grief. Nature, usually pictured as loving and peaceful, is portrayed here as a hellish nightmare. Which it really is if you think about it. Everything here is trying to eat everything else. He and she, lacking names, are characters stripped down to their bare elements. They are pure emotion. I'm not even sure we're looking at actual people half the time. I feel like these are their emotions made flesh. She is all mourning and guilt, and all he wants to do is fix things. But that's, that's what I'm guessing. It's just a couple falling apart. This is a tough movie to talk about. Man, is this movie heavy. It's shot mostly handheld, shots are close, intimate, and there's an almost documentary feel to the scenes. The emotions are raw and genuine. And as the movie progresses, things become more and more extreme. From totally apathetic to holy shit that was uncalled for. And it drags the audience along. There's a very dreary, unpleasant vibe that just beats you down to their emotional level. It keeps you off balance. This movie is physically and emotionally sadistic. It's mostly humorless, but the scene where he could not get that crow to shut up made me chuckle. I, I kind of went into this expecting this vulnerable couple going into the woods and attacked by evil forces. That's not it at all. It's not even man versus nature, it's grief, pain, and despair, each represented by an animal. This is a slow-paced and drawn-out movie. There is a lot of talking, but their conversations can be oddly enthralling because you feel like you're listening to real people and watching someone actually lose their mind. The performances are pretty strong, they're believable, but the rest of the movie is kind of a mess. Antichrist is 1B. It wants to be artsy and deep and metaphorical, but in the end I found it to be so nonsensical that I was distracted by the sudden violence and any subtlety is out the door. Other people might get something out of this movie, but I didn't. Thank you so much for watching. Like, subscribe, comment, the bell, you know, that YouTube stuff. This is the newbie, and I'll see you later, kids. Toodles!